Welcome back to Michael for Shut Up. I'm Chris. I believe I have the biggest penis of everybody on the podcast. I'm here with my wife. Uh, Angie? Oh, you forgot my name. Thinking <laughs> <laughs> no, about your own penis. Right. <laughs> right. I'm just in awe. I mean, I'm in awe of it. Oh I laugh because you laugh, okay? <laughs> yeah, because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with my brother-in-law, Bodie. Apparently not as big dog as big dog. <laughs> and my sister, Reagan. Hello. And also, uh, technical support, uh, Reese. Yo. Mr. Reese, 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 Reese. <laughs> this is episode number 20. And uh, let's kick it off. With, uh, zero. Yep, yeah, with another Christmas. It's another Christmas episode. So let's uh, talk about some Christmas shit. Oh, no, wait. Actually, first we have to call out a, a listener. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> in episode 17, we had a poll question that asked the question, what was the original name of the band, the legendary band, Kiss? before it was actually KISS. The reason that this poll question existed is because there is a, I don't know what you call it, an urban myth, maybe, or an urban legend, Yes. that the band was originally named the F Word, which was what episode 17 was all about. And when they signed with a record label, the record label wouldn't put that on an album cover, so they had to change it, and they changed it to KISS, which is a very soft version of the F word. Okay, so I, I, need, I need to know, I need some clarification. Were they, was the legend that they were originally named the F word no. or fuck? fuck. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Just yes. wanted to make sure we clarify we that. We had to get that F word in. All, all our listeners. If it was the F word, then they could put that on the uh, Well, on the you know, cover. since Kiss right, started yeah, a very long time. the F word However, on Kiss cover. started a very long time ago, and, you know, <laughs> rules were different back then, so I was just curious. Very okay, true. So no anyway, in, re- in, in, in the results of this particular poll question, we have to shout out one, wi- one listener, Eileen Chasson. Who got the answer correct? And the answer is Wicked Lester. In January of 1973, Gene Simmons, uh, Paul Stanley, and who's the other dude? Ace Freely. Ace Freely, and the, well, there's another one. Chris. Something Chris. Yeah. You should know because that's your I, fucking name. I should name. fucking know, but <laughs> I, I knew until you asked me. Anyway, they auditioned <laughs> lead guitarist Ace Freely. And the same month, that they auditioned Ace Freely is when the Wicked Lester name dropped and the band became Kiss. So uh, Paul Stanley is credited with coming up with the name while Ace Freely designs the original version of the logo. That's a little Kiss right. trivia. Yep. So it was Irene Chasson? Eileen. Eileen. Eileen Chasson. She, okay. she answered the question first, which is why we're calling her out. Right. In case somebody She's else was like, I said it and too. And she but. gets a shout out from the whole crew. Shout out Eileen. Come Woo! on, Eileen. That's I'm one of my favorite. Fa- Eileen. I don't know the words. But- Good job, Eileen, fa- Eileen Chasson. I think everyone should say Eileen Chasson's name. Why do we have to say Chasson? Chasson. Eileen Chasson. 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 Eileen Chasson. Yeah, that's right. Reese, well, is that how you say it? Chasson or Chasson? I would have gone it's, with Chasson. It's, yeah, uh, see, there you go. It's Eileen, I Eileen C. That's <laughs> yeah, she I, might not run her name to be glad. I said Eileen Chasson. That's how I said it, with a C-H. Anyway, but I'm also job. from North Louisiana, not from South Louisiana. So. Well, we just want to make sure we said Eileen's name lots of times yes. because she was the first one to answer. Right. Yay, way to go. And Woo-hoo. she just edged out another one of our listeners who also had the correct answer. Right, which but, was Libby. Ah! Because I <laughs> no, I had to say no, it because you can't I knew, shout her out. She was sick I'm not to shout her out, but I had to say it because I knew if I didn't say it, I would hear about it. Eileen, 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 <laughs> yep. come on, Eileen. Dexie's mid, Dex, uh, yeah, Dexie's midnight runners. Is that correct? That's who sings. Yes. Come on, Eileen. Yes. Oh yes, Dexie's yes, midnight yes. Runners. very yeah. good. In the video, one, they're wearing one hit, overalls. One hit wonder. One hit well wonder. done. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. One hit. Yes, you know who else had a one hit wonder? Was that the Lots of house people. in New Orleans song? The the animals. The animals. House yeah. of the Rising Sun. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Billy, Billy Vanilla, he, they were a wonder. Well, they were not even a one hit. <laughs> no, but they were a wonder. Like, but isn't that fucked up now because everybody lip syncs now? And now Millie, Millie Vanilla is like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, everybody lip syncs to their own music, though. Right. They don't, lip they don't sync pretend to like they're the ones singing it. I know. Like the but it's still, apparently, the they didn't have the, se- the technology sound boards <laughs> today, <laughs> or they would have been great. Remember when they tried to say, we can sing too, and they tried to sing their favorite sound. And it was terrible, like, yes. Nah, nah, yeah, it was like nails on a chalkboard. Right. <laughs> yep. Oh, the 
was great. Anyway, so uh, what's our uh, since there's only two episodes left with a Christmas theme? What's the uh, what's the Christmas theme going to be today, baby? What are we going to talk about? Oh yes, we were talking about catalogs from when we were little. Oh yeah, like or, how yeah. picking out toys. Yeah, how what catalog? <laughs> but Bodie said he got a different catalog than the rest of us did. You don't want to know what I used my catalog for. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I didn't use my catalog for Christmas selections. Well, but, we, but that I was the Sears did. one. But that thought, was the Sears one. But you got a Toys R Us. Oh, I did. One. I had a Toys R Us catalog. So what did you use the Toys R Us catalog for? I circled the gifts that I thought were cool and handed the Toys. The R Us Sears catalog, catalog is the mother. important catalog. Apparently. Okay, so we had the Sears catalog that we circled our stuff in. I so. was circling bras and panties. Ah. Oh. <laughs> hey, look. Okay. For all you millennial and Gen Z going, what's he talking about? It's because there was no internet back then, and a young man had to get porn anywhere he could. Right. You couldn't just get porn anywhere. Yeah. And then we got really advanced when there was actually a Fredericks of Hollywood catalog. Right, that's when Ooh, it that kicked off. That's, that's kicked because off. they did dirty, cl- dirty, yeah. dirty well, lingerie. They had lacy lingerie. And they had thongs. Sears just had grandma panties Actually, and bras didn't they, didn't they have everything. like where they would cover their their nipples and they would like have like a bra that was like underwire and just cover their nipples? Yeah. Look no. at Chris. Chris no, actually, uh, Na- National so, Geographic. Otherwise, I would not have been using the catalog. National <laughs> Geographic took it up even further because they didn't yeah. have bras in National Geographic. Oh, right. That's God. because the tribe of... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't wear bras. Right, right. Well, it was the tribe oh of... Blue <laughs> that, that had the biggest titties. I can tell you that right now. Yes. Yeah, the ones with the plates in their lip. Yep. Boy, they had some juggages. And y'all find those long, hanging, <laughs> sagging boobs hey, attractive? Any boobs. You when, gotta you, understand. when you like 12 years old and right. you ain't never seen a boobie, right. you look at boobies. Yeah, any but did you see deflated pillows? If, if, the, <laughs> if the internet hadn't been invented yet, any boobie is a great boobie. That's right. You don't get to pick and choose, go through 10,000 videos to find the best yeah, boobies. Yeah, not like now. Yeah. Like now, you can. You can get green ones and red ones. Mm-hmm. And that was almost a motorboat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when you're talking about titties, you got a motorboat. Yeah. We've already discussed that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, kids don't know how good they had it. I had to walk up a hill in the snow just to get With the no National Geographic. Yeah, to, just to get the Barefoot. National Geographic magazine. And yes. I was thankful to have it. Yes. So that reminds me of something. I'm going to go Does on it? a tangent. Yeah. So, you know, remember being in school and being taught history and all that, and you learn yeah. about, like, I always thought, like, it was cool, like, we had our grandfather was in the Korean War, and then, um... And that, that was cool? <laughs> because he, he was a part of history, right? Sure. He was part of this thing we learned about. And then, um, recently I had a uncle die and found out, like, he was in World War Two and it was, like, this very hugely commended fighter Maybe pilot yeah. and you know stuff like that and i never ever ever thought i'm gonna be a part of history i'm just a regular joe that's what i thought and we've been through covid we've been through trump like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> no but i mean mostly like covid and stuff and the vaccine like we literally have been yeah part history. of history that's great we're, stupid history right, right. we're gonna be part of history where people are going to look back at us and go, you stupid fucks. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I get yeah, that. The but... world's most ignorant decade. Yeah. That's what we're going to be concerned mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm happy too. Yeah. Well, Thanks I mean, I'm not that proud that I'm part of it, but like I it never thought. Like I, no, no I'm just, it's ironic. It's, I'm dumbfounded that we are actually a part of history because, you know, you always have those stories where somebody says, uh, like Chris was saying, I walked uphill both ways through the snow, and you know, and you're like, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's true. Like, we will be able to tell our grandkids shit well, that what we Chris had to deal with. Is that we were we used to listen to old folks tell us about how hard they had it, mm-hmm. and then we were like, yeah, right, whatever. But now we're the old folks, yes, so we absolutely. get the right to say those same things, right? But you're not e- equating. Uh, serving your country and <laughs> losing friends in the Korean War or World War Two to putting on a mask and, and going submitting to, the, to the government. No, yeah. she no, no, not in no. The least. I understand what you're saying. You're saying that while they had something great that they could be proud of, we have this shit. No, she's saying. No, we no I'm saying. 
what we are going through will be in the history books. Right. And That's she right. never would have imagined That's right. That's correct. that we would be part of anything that right. would be right. recorded. Right. 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 Yeah. And I mean, like, not necessarily Trump, but except the fact that now there's this whole MAGA thing, well, right? Trump derangement syndrome. Well, right. True. Like, because obviously every president is in the history books, but like this whole, the way it's escalated, like you said, yeah. Trump derangement syndrome and all that bullshit and all these liberal snowflakes. And then, of course, like, we'll be telling our kids how, uh, you know, you're lucky. We, we had to look through encyclopedias. When we were kids, correct. You know, we also didn't have. I was just about. <laughs> I was just about to say that. We didn't I'm have. We also uh, have the internet. Dewey Decimal System. Yeah. Card catalogs. We had to check out books. Yep. And bring them back on time or pay money. I mean, like there's literally like we are those people now. Yeah, you're right. Well, you know what's really classic. You remember the phone that used to have the super long and yes. Yes. Like stretch all the way into yep. your bedroom and then the yep. wire. Yep. And then when you'd hang the phone up, it'd have this like long 10-foot wire hanging to the floor and all twisted up and yep. knotted up. How many of us stayed on the phone with their significant other until they fell asleep and woke up to... Ah, 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 ah. No. Never? Yeah, no. no. Right, no. no. I, oh, my God, I did. <laughs> Just you, because you're crazy. <laughs> also, no. no. Also, I, no. I, I did not like to talk on the phone. I Amazingly, I my job is that. talking on the phone, but... I don't like to talk on the phone. Like, I never have. Right. Well, the I'm big like, ridiculous thing now is with the new technology, now they're FaceTiming, they're video calling until each other falls asleep. And you right. wake up in the morning with a video of a sleeping person in right. the phone. And, and that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I think it's creepy. It is creepy. It's like having another person in your house that you don't know is in your house. Well, right. here's what's worse than that. If Reese experienced this. When Reese was in his dorm, <clears throat> his roommate was doing that, and Reese was like... They're falling asleep with the girlfriend on yeah. the phone? He's yeah. like, I'm in my bed across the room, and I have this girl literally watching me. Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure I'm dressed appropriately at all times, and... Actually, you that's know, not what that means. Well... <laughs> Yeah, but you I'm, don't have to because right. it's your fucking dog That's right. That's right. Yeah, but to be respectful. Well, that's fuck them. They're not no, no, respectful. Yeah. I, don't, I think it was more a modesty thing yeah. than it is. Uh, yeah. Who gives a shit what they see? Right. It's more, I don't want to show you all yeah. of my goodies. Yeah. Because I don't know you. Right. But yeah. Absolutely. You know, in a way, it's invasion of his privacy. It really is, yes. No, absolutely. Just like, I don't want to hear everybody have their damn conversations on speakerphone. Yeah, they oh, do that yeah. shit in the store. Yeah, yeah. everywhere, everywhere, Grocery everywhere, restaurants, everything. Mm -hmm. I hate it. They when we worked at Golden Nugget, in the employee dining room, they had a rule. They had to end, you know, make a rule saying you cannot have conversations on your speakerphone in the in the EDR because yeah. people complained about it so much because it would be so loud. We could over TVs going in the EDR. Yeah, so ridiculous. Yep. <clears throat> Today's generation, buddy. Yeah, they suck. They suck. They really do. Who? They suck. Unless they listen to this podcast, then you're pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Speaking you're the ex of, you're the exception. Correct. You're the Speaking exception. Speaking of kids from these days, I have a friend. We're going back to Christmas a little bit. Yeah. Who said that one of her kids? She has three, by the way. One of her kids asked for almost fifteen hundred dollars worth of Christmas presents. And she said he asked for a laptop, a new iPad, and a new phone. And she said he's not getting any of those. And he's not, he's going to throw a fit on Christmas. And I'm like, I wish a kid would. That's right. why we don't have kids, though. That's why we don't have kids. No, I agree. I agree with that whole sentiment. Because if you have a kid that's going to pitch that kind of fit when they don't get a gift on a holiday gift-giving season and they don't get the gift that they wanted that is a high dollar item or whatever, or even if they're just, let's say the kid gets a pair of socks. If it's my kid, they better look at that pair of socks and smile real big and say, thank you so much for this beautiful pair of socks. Because if they don't, I'm going to punch them in the teeth. <laughs> and that's, you got to teach your kids. If you have a kid that does that and acts that way, that's because you ain't teaching them right. You ain't parenting. You need to parent that child. You know, I, I don't know who this person is, and now they're probably gonna hate me. But no, know. not at all, not at all. You do have to discipline. No, that she, um, 
they were asking the opinion of some of their of friends online go what do you think and my first response was oh well you well, get what you get my response would be apparently you don't spank your child enough oh no they get disciplined they're just ungrateful kids i think well, yeah that, that's i think exists. but i also yeah. think that the you know they have so many things these days like, they have the iPad, they have a phone, they have, you know, a laptop when they're, like, 12, 13 years old, and they grow up with it. And so, I don't think they know how to be a kid. Right. Like, they don't go outside, they don't play games the way we did. That's right, they don't go outside, yes. I, re- I right. remember going out, we would get pushed out of our houses in the summer, and our parents yep. were like, well, we were bored also. Outside. Yeah, that was a literal thing that I was told regularly yep. when I was growing up. Go play outside. But Don't we be were, in this house. We were also bored because there wasn't the internet. And, Correct. You know, Video games. TV and was well, very like limited. But we, also, but we also had imagination. I can tell you right now, <clears throat> from my own experience, because I used to babysit, uh, that kids who are all about global warming and we're destroying the fucking planet stuff, they don't actually care about nature. They don't want to experience nature because when I, I'm talking about I was babysitting kids that were like six years old, seven years old, and so I would, I didn't have any uh, entertainment system. I, I wouldn't let them play my Xbox. They broke it. I'd have been mad as hell. So, right, so they didn't get right. to play my Xbox. So screw them. Took my whole life yeah. to get to this Xbox. So, uh, so screw them. <laughs> but uh, when we were like watching cartoons or whatever, I, t- I would take them outside to play. And I'd walk them around the block, stuff like that. And I noticed that uh, the boys had no interest in things that I absolutely loved when I was a kid. Like I remember one time um, we were walking and there was a little tree. That was only a few feet high, and uh, there was a bird nest in it, and it had you know had babies and stuff in it. So I was like, "Oh, this is cool. I'll show them this." They they did not want to look at the baby birds, which I thought was odd. And then I remember one time we came back from a walk, and there was a uh, there was a lizard on on the brick outside on the wall. And so I, I told one of the little boys, I said, "Catch that lizard." And he went, no, you catch it, because he was afraid of it. And I said, no, no, you catch it, you know. <laughs> and he would not do it. He would, wouldn't, he wouldn't it, yeah, he made no attempts. And then another time, right after it rained, we were walking, and there was, you know, how whenever it rains really hard, you know, earthworms come out and they're trying to crawl around. So you see them crawling around on the uh, concrete and stuff. Well, there was a worm on the concrete, an earthworm. So I was like, oh, look at this earthworm. And I touched it, and you know how it starts flipping out yeah. and, and uh, yeah. flopping around. It scared the piss out of him. He went and he hid behind me and he, and he hugged my leg. Because he was so afraid of it. And I was like, what the hell? When I was a kid, I was grabbing snakes and, I mean, yeah. catching everything I could. Putting frogs in our yeah. pocket. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I didn't like frogs. It's it's an odd. They just have a different them. mentality it is. today. They have a different mentality. It is. But you know something, though? I'll tell you what. Not everybody is that way, and it doesn't have to be that way. I have really been enjoying this YouTube channel. It's called The Outdoor Boys. Mm-hmm. Have you watched it? Man, it's the greatest thing ever. Sometimes this this channel gets so wild sometimes that I'm going, oh, my God. You bringing your four-year-old in negative 26-degree weather? And they build, like, igloos and stuff. But these boys, bro, they are hardcore. They They don't care. They're out there loving it. They're out there eating limpets (laughs) off of the side of rocks. They're eating worms. Like, they're they're jamming it. And I'm thinking, man. My kids would lose their mind if I would even bring them out in a 40 degree weather, much right. less minus 26. Right. You yeah. know, I know I, I have watched several episodes of that. Channel. Oh, I, love I, it. I do enjoy it. I, I think the it. dad is a bit of a goober, he is a goober, however, right? okay. he's awesome. Yeah, because he's he great. takes his kids out and he explains stuff to yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And he teaches them. Yeah, he, he yeah, I do. Yes. I do worry though about those boys with their um social interaction with people because they homeschool those kids. Which is great. Well, but I don't... You know what? We'll talk about that on this episode. You want to do that? I just wonder how much social interaction they get with other children and stuff. I I mean, I don't know. They may get a lot. Yeah, I think that there's pluses and minuses to that whole situation. Sure. Obviously, the plus is that your kid doesn't go get indoctrinated by all of these people at the school that are trying to teach them that, you know, everybody can be a woman and, you know, you can can't call somebody she and you know all of these things that they're teaching children these days that is so ridiculous so you can avoid that by having your teach your children educated home but the problem with that is that they never learn how to interact with other human beings so it's a you know it's kind of a fine line balance 
some homeschool group have some homeschools have groups mm-hmm. like right. you know they do play dates and stuff together. They may go to church where they have As a library. You know, people at church have kids or whatever. I don't know. I obviously he doesn't show that side. Mm-hmm. So I'm right. hoping at least well, his kids get that. I will say that I see where I hear where you're coming from, and it does make sense. If those kids only interact with their parents and their siblings. They're going to be awkward as hell when they get out to the real world. However, if they are allowed to interact with other children while they're being homeschooled, then it's not an issue. Correct. No, yeah. But correct. I mean, even if they were interacting with other family members, you know, cousins or whatever, I mean, you know, having playtime stuff, I think that even would be adequate to teach them how to interact with other people. But uh, I think even that risk is worth it of them being awkward if they're not indoctrinated. You know, I. Let's talk about this because uh, I have a problem with school. I've always had a problem with school. <laughs> of course. Yes. I mean, we, yeah, we're, I have, we're aware. I have always had a problem. Prison for children right. and school nobody is... ever needs math and never used English before. No, I never said can... nobody needs math. I never said that. I said that they only need to teach basic math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, right? basic stuff. Because I, you never added and subtracted letters before no, since you got right. out of school. Well, no, right. what I'm saying is uh, I've never used Pythagorean theorem. Uh, you know, for example, I've never used proofs. Uh, I've never had to use, you know, how to figure out what the geometry of something is. I, you don't but need you, that shit. You have, though. You just have might I? not know it. Have you ever built anything? A structure? <laughs> not really. Not really. So you Sorry. used to work for a construction company. If you've ever built anything and you're trying to make it square, they use the Pythagorean theorem all day long. Because they measure the length of each side, and then they know that they can have a direct 90-degree angle if the the centerpiece is a certain width and certain length. That's the Pythagorean. Blah, 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 blah. That, that thing. That is the Pythagorean theorem in actual use. It happens. I've used it. I've never built anything, but I've been around people building things, and I've All done right. the math to make sure that things are square. Okay. Right? Seems like you're just being a dick right now. But I'm, okay. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to be there. I've never also diagrammed a sentence after I left high school either. That's okay. How did that Pythagorean theorem work on our bathroom upstairs? I don't know. What what bathroom did it work on? I I didn't build the bathroom I think she's being sarcastic. What do you mean? Are you talking about the plumbing that I did terribly? The the tub? Yeah, the good news is that the plumbing didn't involve the Pythagorean theorem. What about the tub that we installed? Also not a Pythagorean theorem. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. I thought if you built anything... Yeah, if you'd have to build the walls around the tub and the plumbing in order to have to make them square. I unfortunately couldn't make the tub square because the tub was already built when I owned it. And (laughs) the plumbing is also already built when I'm trying to install it very poorly. Yes, I am not a handyman. You just outed me for the world. No, neither, am uh, I. Hey, well, neither am I. When you, you said, first. Chris, have you ever built anything? <laughs> right? No. no. Let, let, me, let me tell a story about school. This will illustrate something very important. <clears throat> so, uh, this is a monumental moment in my life. I just didn't realize it at the time. So, I think I was in second grade. I'm almost positive I was in second grade. A monumental moment of yep. your life. That's in right. So, oh, no, here, no, here. It's, no, it's going to be. Okay. So. Well, what happened is when we go have you know the library hour or whatever, we would go to the library and the librarian would read us a book. We, you know, every, all the kids we'd sit around, she'd read us a book, and then there would be some activity afterwards related to the book to help us learn about something. Okay, I'll never forget this. So we, they, re- she read us a book. I, I wish I could remember her name, but I, I, I can't remember her name. The book was called Red Tag Comes Back. Red Tag Comes Back. Okay, it's a story about a salmon. So in the book, uh, a scientist or a ranger or whatever tags a young salmon with a little red tag, okay? And then in the book, you learn about the life cycle of salmon, how they swim out to the ocean, grow up, and then they come back. After they've lived their life, they swim back to the very river that they themselves hatched from. Then they spawn, lay their eggs, and then they die. Right. Okay? So that's what the book is teaching you, all right? Mm -hmm. So... After she reads us the book, she gives us all a little stencil, a little simple stencils of fish. You know what I'm talking about? That where it's you know real simple. It's just basically the sure, body like the and, Jesus the, and the fish. T- right, exactly like right. the Jesus fish. Uh-huh. So she gives us all a stencil, and uh, we're supposed to take the stencil and draw draw it out on a piece of uh, construction paper, cut it out, write our names in the fish we just cut out, and then she was gonna place them all on the board. 
So everybody is going to have their names on the fish. So everybody have a different color fish, right? Okay. So I'm standing in line. So she has this pack of construction paper where all the students are going, each one grabbing a piece of construction paper so they can do their fish. So I'm standing in line waiting to, to get to my piece of construction paper, thinking to myself, what color do I want my fish to be? So I'm watching everyone else, and I noticed that everyone was uh, grabbing a color and no one was using the white sheets of construction paper. So I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to be the only person who has a white fish. Mine's going to stand out amongst all the other colored fish. So that's what happened. So I'm the only student that grabbed a piece of white paper and I, I did my fish and I wrote my name on it. And I was so happy. I was like, ah, I'm the only one who thought of this idea. I'm going to stand out on special. No. I, I, right. I hand, in my, <laughs> I, I hand in my white fish. So she's, you know, it's just the same. When we got the construction paper, we had to stand in the line, hand them to her. And as we handed them to her, she was posting them. She was tacking them up on the board, bulletin board. I get up there, I hand in my white fish, and she literally yelled at me and fussed at me, saying stuff like, what are you doing? You chose a white fish, a white piece of paper? Oh, we had all oh, this well, colored paper. Oh, it was well, reenacting. Yeah. And so, I was there, and so I, like, it blew, I was like, what the fuck? So I realized at that moment that the reason why I was getting fussed at was not because I grabbed their white sheet of paper, but because I didn't do what all the other kids did. Really? It was, you did not conform. I didn't conform. Well, that is correct. My question to you would be, what color was the background that the fish were placed on? I don't remember. Probably I don't think it was. No, actually, I think it was brown. I think it was that corkboard thing where you just tap oh, stuff just on. Oh, corkboard. Okay. So, don't so try to justify. Just don't, like try, don't, don't try to I mean, justify I'm trying, this I'm goddamn devil's teacher. advocate. That's what I so, do. what happened was, I didn't think like everyone else, and I got in trouble for it. What I later realized as I got older was that was how the rest of my life was going to go. Mm. I don't think like everybody else, and I'm always getting in trouble for it because the powers that be do not like you to think differently. Right. That is a fact. Right. And that is the purpose of school, to make everyone think the same. That was a very monumental moment of your life. Yeah, but you would later learn that you have a reason why. Well, I know, but that's not the point. The point is, she chided me for not thinking like everyone else. How do you spell that word? C-H-I-B-E-D. Mm -hmm. That's nice, dude. I went to college for a short period of time before I dropped out. <laughs> right. You Wait, didn't, you didn't like school. Right. So right. you continued to go I did to the Voluntarily. I'll tell you why. Because everybody told that's just the only way you can fucking survive in the world. You have to go to college. That's what everybody said. You have to go to college. You want to make more money, which is not true, by the way. No, it's absolutely but not true. It's a you, no, you, you give me more money and you, no, you leave don't. with nothing. Yeah, you give more well, money. Yeah. Not everybody leaves. No, but a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes, you didn't lot, leave with nothing. That's no, true. I didn't leave with nothing. I left with a wife. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that is true. That's that's what. I Colin bet you got wish me. they would take her back. <laughs> no, 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 I do not. It's but okay. he's still paying I for it. I bet. Oh, yeah. yeah, that is a fact. That is a fact. Wow, that is a very good story. It's a very good story. I'm actually impressed. Yeah. It did. It does mean something to me. Um. Well, I don't know if this is everywhere, but in Louisiana. Yep. When you start high school, ninth grade, you have to pick a path. You can either do the college path, or you can do the um, trade, school. Trade, school. trade school path. I think that's brilliant, though. I do. I like Except, that. Except, what if you if you start the trade school path after one year, you can't you cannot change. Right. So then you're screwed, you and you will not yeah. qualify to go to college. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you might well, could do like a community college, well, but you will not have the required classes to go to, uh, well, you know, I, a good mm, college. I'm going to tell you something right now. College is useless. Unless you're going for something very, very specific, very, very niche, college is useless. No, yeah. Definitely trade schools need to be uh, pushed. Absolutely. Yep. I think trade schools are... Oh, I know. I think I have to disagree with that. I have to disagree. Do Electri you? Electri Emphatically. Really? Because if you didn't have, you were saying college is useless. If you didn't have college, you wouldn't have cell phones. You wouldn't have technology. You wouldn't have doctors. No, no, no. That's you not what he said. Right, that is not what I said. Professions. Yeah, you said no, it was no, very, said, very niche. Right. It, an which engineer, would be a doctor. It would be an engineer, for example. A, a doctor, yeah. nursing. So, so that's what 90% of college is. What you're mm. talking about is people that go to college for gender studies or fine arts. Yes. Or... Some other foolishness that's just, philosophy. Yeah, that's not really General a lot. That's not really a large portion of college. Yeah. Most colleges have professions that you go into specifically: architecture, education, to be a teacher, 
you know, those those right. those are the the ones that that make people into into professions. Right. So yeah, there is a portion of college that's completely useless, and there's it's probably larger than I'm letting on. But and you know, uh, I went <clears throat> to college uh, for radio, television, film. That was my ra- my major, mm-hmm. and uh, I went there. I was I was not naive. I thought. Because my plan was not to go there and graduate and think that I was going to be fucking ushered into Hollywood and get hired on a job. Right. Of course, I knew you that knew was. I knew that was absolutely never going to fucking happen. Sure. The reason why I went there for that program was because I was like, okay, I'm going to be able to have access to equipment that is used in that industry, and I can learn how to use it, mm-hmm. and then I can use that kind of equipment to make my own film and to go the independent route. That was my sure. plan. Sure. And uh, in fact, there was a girl there. Um, when we first went, <clears throat> the first semester, there was a girl there that was talking about how she liked to make horror movies and whatnot. And I remember thinking, I'm going to fucking pair with this girl, and we're going to fucking make an awesome horror movie independently, and we're going to beco- fucking become famous. Right. And uh, and it was weird because um, the textbook, one of the textbooks you had to buy, which cost $200 fucking dollars. Yeah, that's, already, that, and, that's a whole other topic yeah, because that's ridiculous. It, it cost $200, and it's already been used 75 times. Correct. And then you got to give it back afterwards. And so. 74 people before yeah. you paid the same $200 right. or more. Right. And next year, it'll be no good. Right. So I was actually reading the book for fun. There was a, It was like history of, it was history of movies and television shows. And I was reading the book for fun because it was so interesting. And I remember thinking, I'm going to fucking ace this major. I mean, this would be the first time in my life that I do well in school. Because you, you know, enjoyed it. Because I was enjoying it, sure. right. But instantly, when I started going to classes, I realized something was, was wrong. Because uh, they would say things like, um, don't, don't decide. They would say, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, I want to be a director. And I said, no, you don't. And I said, yes, I do. And they go, no, 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 don't decide that you want to be a director. Because you don't know that's what you really want to do. That's what you think you want to do. You should be <laughs> open to other things. Sports, <laughs> cast, you know. Uh, um, weatherman. They were naming all this stupid shit, and I was going, "What? This is ridiculous." I'm a fucking grown man. I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, so I was and, in my twenties. And honestly, sake. being in front of the screen and behind the screen are two, two completely th- right. different right. things. Right. So this was all leading up to something. So I, I kept thinking, "This is dumb." And they were like, "No, no, you don't know. You might not want to do movies. You might want to do radio." And yes, before you say something, I realize the irony of the fact that I'm doing a podcast <laughs> that right now. you are now. doing okay? radio. <laughs> I realize the irony of that. But that's not the point of the story. So um, so I remember thinking, what the, f- this doesn't make any sense. They kept trying to discourage us from fucking picking a direct path, which I thought was odd, you know. And then what happened was we went to one class. And so I don't know, how, there was like 20 of us in the class. So we're sitting around and the teacher doesn't show up for like 10 minutes after the class is supposed to start. So we're like, what the hell's wrong with the teacher? Well, maybe traffic was bad or something. I don't know. Maybe he had to take a shit. Who knows? So we're waiting. 30 minutes goes by. No teacher. We're like, what the hell? So I said, maybe this is an experiment to see what we'll do if no teacher shows up, you know? So we waited the entire hour. No teacher. So we all get up together as a group. We go to the office and ask, what the hell's going on? Our teacher never showed up. And they go, oh, yeah, radio, television, film program has been canceled. We're not doing that anymore. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because you didn't mention that whenever I paid. Right. My whole tuition and all of the money that I spent already for this program was never returned. Right. And which, you just which is don't why, tell anyone? Right. Which is why I dropped out of college because they That's fucking, not the reason why you dropped well, out of college. Well, it's one of the main reasons. They took my money for a fucking program that they weren't fucking teaching anymore. No, so I was like, it. what the hell else am I going to go for? I don't wow. want to go for anything else. So I quit. Plus, I had two teachers that were total douchebags that failed me. Uh, I had a teacher, American history teacher. That, of course, had nothing to do with my major. That's another thing where college sucks. You're taking classes that have nothing to do with what you're fucking going for. But We so, know. We've heard this from Reese a million so, times. Well, it's true, it's though. Stupid. It's stupid. No, I know. So, I I'm know. In, so I'm in American history class, and uh, the fucking teacher was a total douche because he would talk the whole time, and he made you take notes. He wouldn't let you have a tape recorder. And he would always have trick questions on his test. He would make it very difficult to pass the test. It would always be a trick question. So if you really, really, really didn't know it, you were fucked. Right. But then he also had this bad habit of there were uh, there were a lot of people in the class and it was a small group of like I don't know ten people and they, you know, they were black and they would sit in a group all by themselves in the corner and the reason why I'm pointing that out is because they would talk and cut up the entire time the class was going on they didn't want to be there so he'd get annoyed and there were many days where he he was a white teacher so he didn't want to correct them. Because he'd only be correct in this group of black people, so he was like, "I can't do that if I want to keep my career." I know that's, what, I know this is what is happening. So, he fucking would get mad. He'd get furious that they wouldn't shut up, and he'd say, "Okay, that's it." He'd close his lesson book and he'd go, 
there's going to be a test tomorrow on what I was going to teach today. I hope you fucking can figure out what it's going to be. Huh. So I fucking failed that class. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm paying money for this fucking guy to fail me. Wow. You know? And then the other thing where I, where I failed, which is ironic, is English. And uh, I remember my English teacher, she did not like me. She made it known right away that she didn't fucking like me. And so every time I turned in a paper, we'd have to write an essay or something, she fucking give me an F. And so I was like, what the hell? So I thought, well, maybe it's me. So I actually paid somebody else to write one of my papers, and that person got an F. Huh. So then I got Angie to write one of my papers, and that paper got an F. And I was like, there's no fucking way three different people are writing, and we all have F at, you know, F papers. There's no fucking way. She's just flunking me. So what happened was uh, there was a test that wasn't where you had to write something. It was just uh, you had to answer questions. And uh, I would have gotten a D on that test if... Uh, except for one answer, you know, one less answer, and I would have passed it. And and uh, the question where I would have passed was it was in a list, when you're using a comma in a list, like if you're saying there are a bunch of trucks and planes and trains, you know, if, in that list, yeah. where are you supposed to put the comma? That was the question. So I put the comma, and then there was and. It was like trucks, cars, planes, and trains. Okay, that was like right. what the sentence was. So I didn't put a comma in front of the word and because I knew that the word and can replace a comma in a list. Uh -huh. So you don't have to put the comma. So she put an X where the comma was supposed to be, which is what gave me the F. So I walked up to her desk and I told her, I said, hey, that's not right. That comma does not have to be there. I know that for a fact. And you know what her answer was? She said, yes, that's true, but a lot of people don't know that, which is why I marked it wrong. What? So in other words, she just didn't like me, so she was making sure I flunked. Wow. So I was like, you know what? I'm fucking dropping out because I'm paying for this. I am paying to be wow. fucked. Yeah. That's There's a name for that. What's that called? Oxford comma. Yeah, the Oxford comma. Okay. That's what it's called. All right. The comma before the and. Yeah. It's, it's either acceptable or not. Either way you put it, mm -hmm. it's not wrong. So if you put the comma, it's okay. Right. If you don't put the comma, it's also right. okay. Right. So, yeah, that's that's. I can't believe that she would have marked that wrong. Okay, so I. How do you feel about this? So now you have to have two years of a foreign language to get into college. Okay. okay? <clears throat> Obviously, Spanish is a very popular choice of foreign mm -hmm. languages. Well, with this immigrant crisis, there are a lot of Spanish people now going to high school. Yep. How is it fair that someone that has Spanish as their first language can take Spanish for an elective? That's bullshit. Right? That's, to me, they should have to take French. Because it's not like when we take English, right? We're not learning how to speak English, simple English. Right. We are learning how to do paragraphs and write stories. And, you know, I mean, it's fucking hard shit. But... When you take a foreign language, you're literally just doing basic language, learning how to speak it, learning how to do basic sentences, you know, just that. I mean, these people don't even have to go to class, and they can right. that fucking is, that pass is, it with an A. That is an unfair advantage, but, I mean, they, they have the right to take the class. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not going to go take the step of fuck them. They're going to pass the class for a reason, so they shouldn't be able to take it. The, the, no, that, that I, is the, no, but I agree with Reagan, though. If if the like English is our first language, why aren't they made to learn a language that's not their first language? The real issue is not that they get to take a class that they can pass easily. I, got, I know the what the issue, issue is. Is that eventually we're all gonna have to learn how to speak Spanish. <laughs> that is the issue. Eventually, that actually will be the official language of this country. I, so. I don't even understand the argument to be honest with you. I'm I'm sitting here trying to go over it in my head, and you're complaining about Spanish speakers taking a Spanish class and you're an English speaker who also takes multiple English classes. No, and no, no, yet no. There's, an, there's an argument somewhere. No, that, I don't take an English class to learn to speak English. I take an English class to learn how to literature, uh, write stories and paragraphs the correct way and Use words and uh, yeah, I but mean, you don't think it's that freaking in a hard. Spanish class, you also learn that. Same no, thing? they learn you basic. You don't think that they use proper grammar in Spanish class, and they also teach, uh, you know, certain genderisms of words, and teach you how to use a word in the context and write a sentence and think They don't. They don't teach that in it's Spanish. It's very, very basic. You took so, Spanish. 
I took French. I took French as well. But Reese took Spanish. Okay. So your complaint is that your English class for English speakers is much more complex and much more difficult than a Spanish class for Spanish speakers. Is that what you're saying? No. That's not what she's saying. What she's saying is, if if Spanish is your native language, you should not be allowed to take Spanish as your elected language class. You should be made to take French, the alternate to the Spanish. You should be made to take... I'm not, I'm not feeling this argument. I'm not feeling it. I agree with you completely. Because <clears throat> it's, a, it's an unfair advantage. Correct. Because you're, they're not... They, it's like them taking one less class than everybody else. Because it's a requirement to take a to take the class, so why aren't they being made to take a class if, that they don't know? Well, let me finish. All right. Why are they not being made to take the class that they don't have as a native language? Because Spanish is not an English person's native language. I say, I say if they are an actual citizen of the United States, then it's cool. If they have <laughs> snuck across the border, then this is bullshit. Then what you're saying is total bullshit and fuck them. But if they are an actual true citizen of the United States, then they just have an unfair advantage and you just got to fucking grow up. I think you're full of shit, but whatever. So what happens if I am a good parent and I teach my child at a very young age how to speak French? And they can speak French and English, both languages, fluently. You don't think that that child should be allowed to take French in high school or college because they know how to speak French? I said if it was your first language. But understand that these Spanish speakers that speak Spanish as their first language also speak English. So they're literate in two languages. Correct. And you think that that's a negative thing. That's why they should have to take French. <clears throat> they're not... When you take a foreign language in high school, you are learning to speak that language. Okay. So what are they learning? It, they're, they're not going to They're not learning with... anything. And they're no, fucking no, up with the go. other I'm kids. Agree to disagree. Gonna, they're yeah, fucking gonna, with the I'm other gonna... kids because when I learned French, right, one of the first things you learn is je m'appelle Reagan. It means my name yes. is Reagan, right? Yeah, that's what you mean. And you're, of course, going je m'appelle Reagan. Like, you, you, it sounds horrible. It sounds fucking horrible. Yeah. It's not, not fluid at all. Everybody's saying it. And you got to say it slow. The teacher has to talk slow. But everybody has to talk in French. And... If you got a few French speaking people in there, it's gonna fuck everybody up because everybody's gonna be going, What? What the fuck yeah. she's saying? Huh? What? <laughs> so yeah. Imagine imagine if there were imagine if there were a hypothetical high school class that taught people how to be a member of the fun police. Then it would be totally unfair for you to take that class. <laughs> because you have okay, but you know this is this is where I disagree because you're with you. Already fluent in fun <laughs> exactly. I, but I understand what you're. I completely agree with Reagan on this. They should be made to take a French class because it's Spanish is their native language. So why would they have to learn Spanish again? Well, let me just say this, and then we'll let it go. I think, and I've always thought since I was a very young man, that being able to speak another person's language is probably the greatest skill that anybody could have. Yeah. So when I hear people that are speaking broken English and they sound really terrible, I still think that that's pretty damn good because I could never do it. I couldn't go to Japan and try to speak Japanese. I would sound millions of times worse than Jackie Chan does when he speaks English. Right. No, you know that's I mean? right. That is right. That's real. Yes. I think anybody that, that can somewhat communicate in another language that's not native to their own is just beyond impressive to me. So, correct. that's my feelings on nope, that situation. That's right. that's right. I always wanted to learn another language, but just too lazy or never could, you know? I got in trouble in French class every day. Lazy, because it is hard to, which I it's feel you. Because I wouldn't, right? I wouldn't mind it. It's a complicated yeah, thing. It's, it's hard. And the hardest language in the world is the one that we speak. Because it's no, the no. dumbest language. It is, it is so yeah. fucked up. Yeah, it's English, the dumbest yeah you're up. right, because we use the same words to have different yes. meanings. Yeah. And they're spelled the same, but pronounced differently yeah. based on context. Well, yeah. because I mean, we have it's literally, so stupid. We have taken language from every culture and put it together. Yeah. So we use rules from every culture, and they only have rules from their own. Of course. So yeah, yeah we yeah, are English fucking language retards. is really, yeah. really not easy to learn at all. Yeah, I think English and Japanese are the, are the, are the two hardest languages Probably. to learn. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to learn Japanese. 
I would love to, dude. I think it would be the greatest thing ever. Just to be able to speak Is it a good program? Because I would t- I would do a program if I knew it would work. A lot of people... Um, Rosetta Stone? Rosetta she said Stone. Babel. Yeah. Well, a lot of people oh. use Babel, and a lot of people use Rosetta Stone, and there's one more. I can't remember what it's called. I have to think about I it. I just don't want to pay for something unless I'm pretty confident. I know I Rosetta to Stone is... How to speak dolphin. Which program teaches you <laughs> I don't know, but that would be super cool, too. <laughs> that Whale? Is- what? Well, I'm going to tell you, if those kids... What did he with say? The, he said, turn off your goddamn engine, he's trying to sleep. Right. <laughs> if the kids that spoke these native languages were really smart, they would just be tutoring. Make that money. Fucking right. Well, I think they're pretty smart because they stuck across the border and now they get to live the life of Riley. Riley. Riley's a hot, hot dude. He's getting it, you <laughs> yeah. know? Do you have a, I have a lot, lot more I'd like to say about school, but I'm not going to take up a two hour uh, Ooh, podcast. it's already been a bunch. Hasn't so it? you have a uh, random thought that you'd like to throw out there? Actually, I do. And, you know, this goes back to when we were growing up and how things used to be. So, you know, we always <laughs> say how we didn't have internet and we certainly did not have cell phones. So remember how, you know, you used to go to the bathroom and maybe... You were young, you didn't pay attention, and you have to take a shit, so you do, and all of a sudden you realize, fuck, there ain't no toilet paper in here. (laughs) (laughs) So, what do you do? You can't text anybody, so you just gotta fucking yell until somebody hopefully hears you, and embarrassingly, if comes, brings toilet paper, you know, covering their eyes to you at the toilet. Oh, no, no, (laughs) right. And you're just as embarrassed as they are, if not more so. But, you know, that was the, the well, good old days. Well, all of that second part still happens with the text message, by the well, way. Yeah, but still at exists. least you don't have to yell at the top of your lungs. Right. And you can yeah. choose who brings you the toilet paper as opposed to, you know, years ago when it was just whoever heard you first. Are you saying that's how cell phones got invented? I mean, if they have them, the... You know, cups on a string <laughs> at the toilet. Yeah, somebody sitting there with no toilet paper going, I've got to find a better solution to this problem. <laughs> Could be. I'm terrible. I'm absolute the worst at getting into the shower without soap in the shower. <laughs> I'm the worst. And I will always yell at her because in the shower, you got no phone. So I'm just yelling at her, uh, Hey, help, help. <laughs> I need soap. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. So I think you're singular on this. Uh, Oh yeah, definitely. you have you have called for toilet paper. No, no, not toilet paper. Soap. soap. Oh no, you would just get out. Yeah, I would just get out. Fuck. I don't understand how people get in the shower without checking to see if they have a towel. Uh, well, I guess. It also depends how. I've done that. I've done that. No, no, I have no done Chris that. has I done, have it. done that. You know, I think it determines on like if you're like super dirty and you just want to just wash the day away, or if you're just super stressed out. And you just want a nice hot shower and just forget about everything. That's how Chris forgets. He's like, I just want to, you know. Also, I forget because I'm old as hell. You're not. Alzheimer's might be starting to kick oh, in. Oh, that's right. Know. Your yep. birthday is this yep. month. Yep. Woo! It turns the big five zero this yep. month. Yep. Yes, indeed. Five zero. Yeah. Over the hill. We have to make you a big black cake and put a cemetery <laughs> tombstone yep. on the top of it. Yep. Be all good. Or we could just buy him a plot. Hey. Nice. He wants to be cremated. Yeah, it works, yeah. You don't yeah, I'm going to be cremated. I'm going to be cremated. I'm gonna be cremated. I'll, we'll fine. buy him an urn. It's fine. <laughs> yep. Yep. I got a cigarette box. <laughs> Just put your ass in hey. there. Hey, <laughs> I, I won't care because I'll be dead. I have right. an ashtray. That would right. be more... It would appropriate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You could tie some cinder blocks to my feet and throw me in the ocean. I won't care. <laughs> Grandma, you say, wrap her in a sheet and throw her in the ditch. Yep. Yes, indeed. Which we didn't do. No, we didn't. No. We did not follow her wishes. <laughs> Shame. Yep. All right, so, uh... <clears throat> wait. Oh, oh. Wait, I have to wait. ask you a question. Well, you ask. Because you told us, and we've been talking about people that have died on the set of movies for a long time, and oh. you told us that there was only a couple of them left, so I would like to know what the most popular one that you haven't mentioned to us yet. Well, actually, uh... There's a few left, but we're quickly, the closer we get to modern day, the faster it's going to get there, if that makes sense. I guess because they started really, as people start started getting killed, started they, really start, they really started picking up safety measures. Right, sure. So, like, there's going to be less and less. I'm going to start jumping through years 
faster and faster. Yeah, because so, of safety precautions. Right. So, so it's not, yeah, it so makes it's, perfect sense. It's not going to be the what, 80s? a couple more episodes. The yeah. 80s or today? Yeah, today's going to be the 80s. It's just going to be a couple more episodes, and then we'll be caught up to Alec Baldwin and his murder schemes. Yes. <laughs> Allegedly. Right. Um, but, uh, oh, before, actually, there's another question that needs to be asked before I do that. And that question is for Reagan, which is from a long-time listener. Oh, I forgot about that question. Yes. Yeah. And uh, his question was, uh, Ashton is the listener. And uh, his, hey, question, <laughs> his question to Reagan is, why do you hate him? I do not hate Ashton because I've never even met him. I guess I'm a little jealous of Ashton because he gets a lot of, <laughs> bless you, he gets nice. a lot of time on this podcast and he's not even a member of the podcast. And he gets sleepovers that we don't get. <laughs> the sleep. You know? We've never had a sleepover. What kind of shit Ashton. is that? Why do you, Ashton, get all the sleepovers? That's and what I want to know. What have you done to get your name mentioned so many times? Because I sit in the room with Chris and Angie, and they don't even mention my name. That oh, that's many not times. true. Your name is mentioned every single episode. Not as many times as Ashton's. The Grinch. Right. I, I can tell you the probably the biggest reason why is because we spent so much time with Ashton when we did not live here, in, when we lived in Lake Charles. Every week we had movie night. Every week. Um, Chris is my brother. We came out of yeah, the same room. They, they exited the same orifice. Right. <laughs> well, I have spent way more time with you than I have with Ashton, so you actually are still winning if it's, it's a contest. You're winning. You can't deny that. All You're right, I'll, I'll let that sink in. Yeah. You do it. So the ultimate answer, I think, is... She does not hate Ashton. No, I don't. Right. Not yet. I, I mean, mean I the reason him, why so. Ashton is mentioned so much in this podcast is because he is a loyal fan, and we are he does listen audience to driven. I've already told you that. We love our audience. That's why we do it. I haven't seen him comment on Facebook. Well, he's supposed to be. He keeps claiming he he's going to. Oh, no, he, he commented, commented on the, on the, on the Spotify, Spotify. He did. Yeah, that's how I knew the question. Yeah, he said, "Why do you hate me?" So yeah, much? it was on the. It was he, on, that was a on comment. the description. It was, it, was, it was on the comment section. Yeah. I don't know how to work so. Spotify. It, it keeps telling me we have something. I go to it. And I well, can't that's find why we it. have technical support. So you need to talk to him. So talk she to Reese. hates you, Ashton, because of her own ignorance. Right. And if he gets your <laughs> ass, over, if he gets your ass over him, be on a podcast, then she would stop hating you. I think that's what she's trying to say. Oh, well, sure, she might hate him more. Or she might hate you more. I don't actually, hate him at all. It yet. would actually, actually hating you more might actually be more fun. And know. we are rapidly approaching a season finale. Yep. So should why he doesn't come for the season finale for the it's last the holidays? Yeah, because it's yeah. holidays. That's the excuse I'm going to take. Uh, but uh, we're going to get on him. We're really going to hound into. Uh, come we're going to try to get two for one. Yeah, we try. He has a twin brother, Ashton and Austin. Yep, and they both get sleepovers. Yep, they are yeah. good twin and evil twin. Yep, and they absolutely live up to that name. Nice, nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, so talk about your movies. Okay, I'm sorry. So, no, no, that's fine. No, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the movie Deaths. So uh, we are up to the year 1983, and what is, besides the Alec Baldwin incident, which is probably the most famous movie death of all time. Oh, this time, is the one Brody the brought crow? up? No, not The Crow. Uh, Twilight Zone, the movie. Yes, came yes. came out in 1983. Yeah. All right? I think The Crow uh, is more famous than that. Well, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, this so let me tell you what happened. This, <laughs> no, is, this one is one of the more fucked up ones. So... The Twilight Zone movie was a, um, it was it was in segments. They had different directors. Um, oh shit! What the hell do you call that? Oh like short stories. No, I forgot. Like tales from uh, the an Crypt. anthology movie. Jesus yeah, Christ! Yeah. I have COVID brain. I can't remember words. Uh, it's an anthology movie, so it's different segments, each uh, directed by a different person. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, one of the segments was directed by John Landis. Which, before I say all this, I just want to say, uh, John Landis has directed many things which I love. I think he's a good director, and I enjoy a lot of his work. But he should go right to fucking jail for what happened here. Uh, so let's uh, let's you know, real disclaimer. I like him, but he should he should went to fucking jail. Sure. All right. So what happened was uh, there was a segment called Time Out, starring an actor called Vic Morrow, who if you see him, you know exactly who he is. And uh, the fucking um, episode the the point of the episode was uh, he was a racist. He's a white man. He's racist, of course, because you know. I was so glad to watch this episode because uh, I had almost forgotten that I was part of the most racist group of people that ever lived. But luckily, Hollywood keeps reminding me, so I won't forget it. Thank you, Hollywood. I appreciate that. Right. So uh, hopefully the next movie I see will have that in it also, which is very likely. So what I, what it is, is uh, it starts off Vic Morrow. He's like in a bar, and he's just like fucking spouting off all kind of racist shit about every group of people ever, you know. And, and a lot of people in the bar are like, hey, man, you're so fucking racist, you know, you know, that whole thing. 
And uh, so he leaves the bar and he gets transported to um, different points in history where people were, uh, who are not white were getting harassed, you know, for their ethnicity. So, like, he gets thrown into Nazi Germany and, of course, he's a Jew, so he's being chased down. And uh, then uh, he gets thrown into the Vietnam War, but he's a Viet Cong. And, which he doesn't look differently. They didn't, you know, they did, they weren't racist when they made the movie. They didn't like, right, it's give like him quantum leap. right. They didn't give him slant eyes or anything like that to make him look. You know what I mean? So, uh, but so he learns through this experience how much he's a racist and like it changes his attitude. Right. Well, the segment where he's uh, in Vietnam, what happens is the Vietnamese, uh, Vietnamese, the uh, American soldiers are trying to kill him. And a couple of kids, and so like he's he's got these two young kids, and he's gonna try to save them from the American soldiers. So uh, what happens is, you know, they're shooting at him and shit, explosions, grenades going off and stuff. And he's got the two kids in his arm, and he like goes across a river or whatever to to get them to safety. And uh, while they were filming the movie, the helicopter crashed and killed all three of them. While he was he had them in his arms, and he was going across the water with them, and a, an explosion detached the rotor from the helicopter and it landed on him and it crushed one of the kids and it decapitated Vic Morrow and one of the other kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, what happened was John Landis hired the two kids, which they were six and seven years old and he hired them without the proper permits. The reason why he did that is because the scene was filmed very late at night and they were going to be in water, you know, in, in, in a, South of amount of water uh, with explosions and fucking helicopter flying over. Mm -hmm. All of which is really a no no if you're going to fucking use kids in a movie. I mean. I wonder why. Right. So, I mean, technically he should have had them ca him carrying a dummy. Like, you know, film the scene where he showed the two kids, but then whenever there was dangerous shit, he should have been carrying two dummies, not right. actual kids. Right. You know, which sure. is how it would be done. Sure. But John Landis didn't want to go that route, so he paid. So, what he did was he uh, paid the, the kids' parents under the table. So he wouldn't have to file work permits and all this kind of shit. And he did not tell them the truth about the scene. He didn't tell them there was going to be a fucking helicopter flying over them with fucking explosions going off and shit like that. Because there was a good chance they wouldn't have allowed their kids to be put in right. a situation. Were they right. not on set, though? I don't know. I uh, mean, maybe, it's a six and seven-year-old. I mean, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they were on set at the time that it was being filmed or what. But I know that he didn't tell them any of that information. To get right. him to hi get hired, so he lied about all that. So when the kids got killed, I mean, there was a trial, and which I remember him testifying and crying and stuff. Which I don't think that he intent he, correct. He yeah, wanted to kill them. I mean, once, you never but, think it's gonna no, happen. No, his negligence. So, yeah, he was so what, careless. Is what you know? contributed to their deaths. Yeah, and honestly, sure. he probably he probably did all that to save money because yeah. you know, I mean, having to film them at, at a because you know when you have young kids like that, you can only film them for a very short period of time. Right. And then he had to hire stunt doubles and right. have to make the dummies that look like he, oh, yeah. he was just trying to save money and time. I get it, but that's a piece of shit thing to do. Right. So what happened was um, after that happened and those kids got killed and Vic Morrow got killed, Steven Spielberg, who was a major reason why the movie got made, I think he was the executive producer. He directed one of the segments of which that segment fucking sucked. But he was really involved in the making of Twilight Zone the movie. And when John Landis got those kids killed, Steven Spielberg told him to get fucked. And he cut all ties with him. And, of course, Steven Spielberg basically runs Hollywood. So when Spielberg told him to get fucked, all the rest of Hollywood told him to get fucked because they don't want to go against Spielberg's wishes. So that's why John Landis suddenly directed a bunch of shit and it sort of died out for a long time. Which you know? I mean, he still directs stuff every now and again, but rarely because of this incident, which yeah. rightfully so. He never should have directed another fucking thing ever. And he should have went to fucking jail because right. it is his fault. Right. You know? So how did they finish the movie if the... Well, I think that was one of the last scenes being oh. filmed because yeah. that segment is in the movie. Um, so they must have just... That part where they were going across the river or whatever um, must have been one of the last things. I don't know. Yeah, but, also the reason why I say that this particular movie set death is uh, more popular than The Crow is because this scene is actually in the movie Faces of Death. And um, they go through it frame by frame and actually show you all of the gory gruesomeness mm -hmm. of the actual well, helicopter blade coming down and well, cutting them the in thing, half and things like that. What's interesting about that is uh, you can actually see that accident take place. It was filmed, so you can see it on YouTube. 
there's a clip Ooh. of it. But uh, when you watch it, you cannot, which I have watched it, you cannot see the actual decapitations. I mean, maybe oh. if you zoomed in. Well, that's you probably know, because YouTube shuts well, that down. Well, yeah, but but I mean, I don't Would know. Would you see I, it on Faces I, of I, Death? I, yes. I, okay, I never I'm watched I'm telling you, on Faces of Death, they do a frame by frame okay. well, I can, where they slowly I can also show tell you that, everything, and it's not fun. Well, I face, wish I would have never watched that movie. Faces probably. of Death faked a lot of things. They did have real deaths in it, but mm. there was a lot of deaths that were fake, so I don't know if they faked some of the footage. For yeah, that. I don't know, I don't, because don't the know, footage I've seen, never it's very that. fast. And you can't actually see the people being killed unless there's another angle that I don't know about that was filmed, which is totally possible. But I have not seen the faces of death, so I don't know. But anyway, so that 1983, that's one of the most famous. That's the one I always think about when I think of movie deaths, even though, I, you know, Brandon Lee was more recent and all that. But yeah, that's the one I always think that's about when I think, I think about people Brandon getting Lee. killed. So <clears throat> we're going to move on to the next year, 1984. And this actually didn't take place. This death didn't take place on a movie set. It took place on a TV series. But I'm bringing it up because of the circumstances. I just want to point out how ignorant some people are. And uh, so it was a it was a series on CBS called Cover Up. And I never watched the series I did. because it was dumb. It was about models who were also secret agents. So just let that sink in. Like Charlie's Angels? No, uh, no, it was a le- it was a modeling like um, kind of like Ford models has like a modeling thing. It was models, but on the side, they were also spies. And when they went on modeling, like, stuff, they would help with, like, bringing down, like, terrorist organizations. And they would get information from, like, other countries and everything. I remember watching it as a child with my mom. Yeah. Granted, well, I was only, like, eight years old, but... The most plausible of scenarios so, yeah, like, like Charlie's Angels. Yeah, right. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sexy people who are also super intelligent. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah, you know. And double agents. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was Cover Girl. I really thought the name of it was Cover Girl for the longest time. Well, was there actually might have been, there might have been another show called Cover Girl, which I didn't watch. I don't know. But uh, so the death that took place was an actor named John Eric Hexel. Okay. And he was 26 years old. So he should have fucking knew better. So what happened was uh, they're filming. They're filming the show, and there's a lot of... I don't know why, but there was something that was delaying the production. So there was just a lot of downtime. Okay? So he's taking a nap because <clears throat> he's waiting for him, you know, waiting for him to do whatever. Or he's just going to sleep while he's waiting for him to get ready. Well, okay, he gets up from his nap, and then uh, the crew's told that the situation's still ongoing. There's going to be more delay. So he gets annoyed, and he decides to start screwing around. He picks up a... 44 Magnum, okay, 44 Magnum pistol with a blank in it, and uh, he thinks he's going to be a joker, he says, uh, can you believe this crap, and then points the gun at his temple and fucking pulls the trigger, which, of course, it killed him, because it wasn't a toy gun, it was a real gun, of course. and he clearly didn't understand how guns work. Right. Uh, because this is not like going to Walmart and buying that little cap gun with the little strip that goes peck. Whenever right. you pull the trigger, this actually had gunpowder in it, mm-hmm. you know? So what happened was the 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 force of the explosion from the blank coming right out of the bow, which is right next to his head, yep. uh, caused fractures in his skull, driving bone fragments. You know, there was some hemorrhaging. And uh, they operated on him for five hours, but he still died. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you can't fucking put a forty four Magnum next to your head and pull the trigger. You just right. can't do it. Right. You know? Um... So I just want to point out how dumb some people are, especially Hollywood. You know, I mean, they clearly don't understand how things work. You know, I mean, you would think just common sense, that's fucking gunpowder. It's an explosion. How do you think the bullet gets thrown out of the barrel? Correct. I mean, that's a lot of force required to make something fly so fast in the air you can't even see it. The moral of the story here is that even if you're shooting blanks, don't put it next to your head. That's right. That, <laughs> that is correct. Big that is facts. correct. Yep. So especially not a fucking forty four Magnum, right. for God's sake. One sakes. of the biggest caliber yeah. handgun that yeah. there might be. Yeah, Jesus don't do that. Christ. So what an idiot. So I just he was such a fucking moron, I just had to mention it even though it wasn't an actual movie. Right. You know? Right. But right. uh yeah. That was a big deal when it happened. So okay. So uh nineteen eighty six, the movie Top Gun. Oh my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Top Gun. Yeah. So, uh, while they were filming, there was an aerobatic pilot named Art Scholl, 
who uh, he crashed the camera plane off the California coast in the ocean, and uh, they never found him or the plane. So I'm assuming that the plane just sunk to the <laughs> mighty depths of the ocean and were never able to recover it. Wow. So yeah, so he crashed, and that was the last thing anybody ever saw of him. So I never and, heard that before. That's yep. <clears throat> new. Well, I guess you don't really want to publicize. Right. Yeah, they, they probably, probably did. Did. They put yeah. that on the news and in the yeah. papers and everything, right? Yep. right? I guess it since it wasn't a kid or somebody really famous, there was no point in bringing it up in the news. I don't know. Right. So the last one I'm going to talk about is uh, in 1987, a movie called Million Dollar Mystery, which I have never seen. But uh, there was a uh, a um, stuntman named Dar Robinson who was uh, filming a motorcycle chase, and he missed the curve, went off of an embankment, dropped 40 feet, hit a rock ledge, and was gored by a sagebrush limb. Wow. That's how he died. Yeah. That's fucked. That's crazy. Sounds fun. Yeah, right. And, but what's uh, ironic is this part. So actually, um, yeah. So if you actually want to see Dar Robinson, like he actually was an actor in a movie um, with Burt Reynolds called Stick. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. That's Sounds ironic. Familiar. It was, yeah, it, it's actually not that good of a movie, but uh, he plays the villain, one of the villains in it, and he's, he plays an albino. Oh. And uh, he's just a... He just in that movie. He's just a scary motherfucker. You th- yeah. you look at that guy and you're like, holy shit! I don't want to fuck with this guy. Right, right. You know? But uh, yeah, the fact that the movie was called Stick that he starred in and then that is how he died. That's ironic. <laughs> but uh, yeah. he died from a stick. <laughs> but yes. yeah, so it's not really that funny. No, it's not that funny. If you're his people, I guess. right? Yeah, if you if you know Don Robinson, it's not funny. But I don't know him, so it's right. kind of funny. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can lot, separate. We can separate no, ourselves. A lot of comedy well, is funny, depending on. Uh, well, which, because the truth hurts. No, the truth does hurt. Yeah. Also, and, and the it truth kills. is funny. It kills. No, right. No, the truth does kill. The truth does hurt. But also, falling forty feet on a fucking tree branch also hurts, but probably not for very long. <laughs> so, oh God. So that was. Did like, he fall face first or? I don't know. That's first. a good question. That's a good. I mean, well, I mean, if was he, he, he violated, was, he was driving. He was driving, <laughs> so I'm assuming that he went face first. Oh, but I mean, however, he flipped, if I he missed the curve, he, he could have went, went on the side. He could have went on the side. Yes. Well, yes. in either way, he's violated. Either right? way, he's screwed. Which yeah. is what I was imagining well, in my head. I didn't imagine. Oh, him. I didn't imagine <laughs> that at all. I imagined him going through his I, chest. Oh, I, I thought he went through his stomach. Wow. Yeah. Rectally. Well, that's some issues. That's some issues you might need to uh, well, work I don't out. Know. I just thought mean? of you know that's probably yeah. not the, not the best way to go. No, know? it's not. No, it's not. That's not how I would choose. If you ask what you're saying, yeah. All right, so uh, I guess this is episode done. I just have to recommend the movie, movie as uh, my wife just pointed out, and then uh, we can. Uh, we, I think done? we should have a written disclaimer right at this point of the episode that says, Chris Rogers' opinions of movies do not represent the, the whole of the podcast. I'm, I'm they fa- are his own, and they are unique. I'm fairly certain that the <laughs> listeners know that my opinion does not match up with the rest of the people in this podcast. That's all right, because my opinion is correct. So, And the only one that matters. That is right. That's for, for movies, anyway. <laughs> Although I agree with this one. So I'm going to recommend another Christmas movie. Yeah, I love Christmas movies. Yeah. So this one, uh, I don't know if a lot of people have seen. It is the, you know, um, of course, everybody's familiar with uh, Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. You know? Yes. Because uh, it has to be in public domain because that's why there are 2,000 movies made on A Christmas Carol. Yeah, don't, don't tell me you're doing the Donald Duck so, one. No, no, I'm not doing the Donald, Donald Duck one. <laughs> no, but... Scrooged? Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I am doing. I am recommending the original 1935 version of that movie called Scrooge. Mm-hmm. Not called Christmas Carol. It's called Scrooge. Um, it's in black and white, you know, obviously because it was 1935. But they have colorized it. So if those of you in the audience who don't like to watch black and white movies, you can't watch this movie colorized. It was well, surprisingly good. It actually is surprisingly good for 1935. They really did a good job of uh, showing you the ghost. I thought I thought that was really well done the way they did it. You know the Ghost of Death with the Shadow. And I, they did an excellent job. I really, really enjoy this version of... I mean, there's only like three or four versions of A Christmas Carol that I think are good. Most of them are poo-poo. But this one is really good. Awesome. Yep. So, 1935. 1935. Leave it to Chris to recommend something yep. dusty out of your mama's basement. Yep. Which actually, but it is on Amazon. That's right. It's on Amazon right now. So if uh, you'd like to watch it, it is on Amazon. Awesome. So, Amazon Prime? Or yeah. Like yeah. Prime Video? Right. Yeah. I, I have it on Amazon. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Prime video. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think 
You think that you have the biggest unit of the podcast. No, I don't think. I want you to, well, <laughs> unfortunately, I cannot argue that. Fact. When has he seen your Unfortunately, he I has. have seen it. Unfortunately, I have seen yes, it. Yes. he has. We don't want to talk about that. We right. won't discuss it. But it has happened. I didn't know so, that happened either. So he does know the facts. Have you seen and his? I, yes. Also cannot argue. Cannot argue oh that God. he's wrong. <laughs> I cannot argue that he's incorrect. It is what it is. Paper what were y'all doing too. naked? We was not. No, we weren't naked. Yeah, you fucking ever made the story to a whole nother level. Were y'all sword saw, fighting? Nobody no, said nothing about no, being naked. No, none of that ever went down. We didn't, see, we, didn't see each other, we didn't see each other's stuff at the same incident. It's two different stories. <laughs> Correct. That's not the That's same right. story. That's right. We were both <laughs> yeah. at the same time. We weren't touching tips. <laughs> Don't make it something it's not. Yeah. You make it seem awkward. <laughs> yeah. Just because we know what each other's junk looks like doesn't mean that we're anything other than what we are. The fact that there are two separate incidents <laughs> where your dick was out. We're, we're brothers. What you want? We spent a lot of time together. Down. Sometimes shit happens. I've never seen Angie's coochie, and I know uh, she's I never would never seen show mine. Um, mine. I'm saying. So. Um, but that's because. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that there's a whole lot of people that go into the bathrooms together, and that there's all kinds of things. So I'm sure I know that you've seen other people's top bosoms, breast testicles, and things of that nature. So <laughs> what's different? But tits and dicks are different. No, they're not. No, they're not. Even butts. Even butts is okay. What? See, butts, too. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen his butt. Does that make you feel better? A little. A <laughs> right. Right. There it is. All right. But I just want to say a paper cut hurts, too. <laughs> right. That's correct. I feel you. So anyway, what I was trying to get to yeah, by please. mentioning that please. is who has the deepest voice? You do. I big, think. Big dog, big dog has Unless the deepest you're voice. Right. Yeah. Yep. Let me see what yours sounds like. Um, signing out. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Don't forget to like and, you know, follow and click the, what's that bell button yep. thing? Do or, those things. even more importantly, leave us money. Leave us money. There's a donation <laughs> button on there. Don't, don't be shy. Yeah, don't hey. be afraid to put a dollar in there, you know. Don't forget about the Facebook, 26 Days of Cheer. Yep. Yes. Social media. Check us out on all our social medias. We love you, and I'm out, big dog. Bye. See you next week. <laughs> Later. <laughs>